Hey guys! So, a lot of things happened since last time I saw you guys. And first of all, we had the Black Friday and I picked up a new OLED TV, which was, let's see, $500 cheaper here in Sweden. The OLED CX by LG, 65 inch. Really nice TV, but I haven't really put it into the actual super testing with a PlayStation 5 and stuff like that, as I still haven't received my PS5. Hopefully I'll receive it sometime before the end of this year. Sony said they would come out with more PS5s, but I think I'll be getting one maybe in February or something like that, but we'll see. Till then I have a lot of games to play anyways, so it doesn't really matter. I actually got Age of Calamity and I haven't really started that yet. I did finish Hyrule Warriors, it was so-so. <laughs> and I've been playing Breath of the Wild. I didn't finish the DLC for that, so now I did. It gave me the really cool motorcycle. I'm super happy about that. I still haven't finished the trial where you power up the Master Sword. It's just too difficult for me. It's like 40 minutes and you can take like two hits if you're lucky. Yeah, I'll, I'll be trying more to do that before I actually start Age of Calamity. I want to finish Hero Mode. 100%. Oh, and actually I've got three shrines left to find as well and all the Korok seeds, but that's kind of meaningless in my opinion. You just get that turd <laughs> from the big guy. Maybe I'll try to go for 800 at some point, but it's not my goal. It's like 120 shrines, finish the Master Sword trial, and that's that. I'm going to put aside Breath of the Wild after that. Anyways, I wanted to record this clip as today I received a package from Analog, the company responsible for Analog NT, NT Mini, the NT Mini Noir, which this is. It actually says here on the box, Analog NT Mini Noir Edition. And they've got the Super NT and the Mega SG. So we're gonna unbox this and we're gonna quickly take a look at some of the features and see how it works. Um, here we go and here we have the console so it looks awesome as usual uh, very very dark gray compared to a SNES controller sort of a metallic dark gray now I've got the blue lights here so they might interfere with the color here somewhat but you've got the analog and HDMI dual output so that we will have to check out. Also I've heard complaints already about the floppy cartridge slot. Not the floppy cartridge slot but the cartridge slot which is sort of loose for the cartridges. Also we need to check out the controller ports, all of them, because I've heard complaints about player 2 port not working at all. So yeah, let's put it to test. So I tested the console with a 8-bit-do 2.4 GHz wireless controller and it plays the NES games and the Famicom games just fine. So next up I want to install the Jailbreak. So Jailbreak opens up much more capabilities of this console allowing us to play ROMs of the NES games and also play NES music, NSFs and it also allows us to play some other cores such as the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color and one of the surprise cores was the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive so I'll have to try that out as well. And the Jailbreak firmware is actually developed by the same guy who makes the official firmware, Kevin Horton aka Kevtress. So first of all you need an SD card, either a micro with a SD adapter or just a normal SD card. And then you need to go to Smoke Monsters GitHub and download the Jailbreak for the NT Mini Noir. I just click the green code button and download the zip and you're good to go. So I've heard recommendations that you should only put the firmware file on the SD card first. So just do that and uh, let the analog NT Mini console flash and once you've done that you can put the SD card system structure zip onto the SD card and you can remove the firmware bin as it's already been updated to the flash. So one of the first games I wanted to try out is Micromages. It's a four player newly developed game 
and it's really, really good. I absolutely love it. Uh, sadly, I don't have three friends to try it out with just now. So I'll try using the controllers myself. I've got four 8-bit DOS connected and it works just fine. I've also tried out with the Hori Famicom four-player adapter and it works just fine with the, the Honeybee controllers there. So really great game. I suggest you guys try it out. So next up I tried Family Basic, which is a kind of a development tool for the Famicom where you can develop your own games using the keyboard. I haven't really tried it very much, but I got into the graphics mode and drawn some stuff at an earlier point. Now I just wanted to input keys and I had troubles with the analog NT. It kept inputting the wrong keys. And so I learned from a guy called Chanas on the uh, GitHub and it seems you have to put the analog anti-mini into pass-through mode for the inputs. So once you do that, the keyboard works perfectly fine. So if you have a controller connected to the player 2 port on the analog anti-mini noir while starting the game Vice Project Doom or Gun Deck, as it's called in Japan, the game will start up in a level select screen where you have to press the A button three times for getting the game to start. Once it does, it's running in slow motion and the audio is running at full speed for some reason. Uh, so in order to fix this, you actually need to uh, put the controllers in pass-through mode. So you go into the uh, controller screen and put it to, into pass-through mode. However, getting back into the game now uh, and restarting it is pretty hard. So you can do that by pressing the select button in order to get back into the file browser menu and then you can just restart the game from there. Or you could double click the uh, power switch on the back of the analog NT Mini Noir and it'll reboot the console and you can start the game over from there and it will have the uh, pass through controller setting. Uh, so hopefully uh, Kevin Horton or Kevtris can fix this in a future version of the jailbreak. Next up I tried the game Lagrange Point or Lagrange Point or Lagrange Point or however it's pronounced. It's the only game using the VRC7 ship for music. The other game using it is called Tiny Toons 2, however that game doesn't use the audio capabilities. And the simulation from the core works absolutely fine, I think it's really good. And the game plays fine as well. Next up I wanted to try something really weird here. I, I took the NES to Famicom adapter and put a PAL game into that, Iron Sword or Wizards and Wars 2, and it worked just fine. Obviously PAL games are going to be running too fast if they were reprogrammed to work better on PAL consoles. And next up I tried my own Esper Dream 2 game, and it's a VRC6 game, and the audio was sounding really weird at first. So I recognized that I had to turn on Famicom Expansion Audio. It's an option in the settings. So once I ticked that box, the audio sounded just fine. And after that, I tried Famicom Disk System. And I put in a, one of my favorite games for the Famicom Disk System, which is Ice Engine Nicole, or Love Warrior Nicole, as it's been translated. And the game is one of my favorites. It worked fine and I played many hours and uh, I had a great blast playing on the analog anti-mini. Next up I've tried another VRC6 music game. Uh, one of the classics, Castlevania 3 or Akumaju Densetsu. And it sounds absolutely fine. I, I think it's superb. Very well done. And next up I tried my most expensive game, uh, Gimmick for Famicom, and it sounds perfect with the 5D uh, chip. Music is absolutely amazing and the game plays fine, and turning off the expans uh, expansion uh, cartridge audio and turning on the uh, simulated audio, it sounds pretty good as well. Um, I think the simulated 5D is absolutely fine. You can play with that uh, using a ROM of the game and it sounds just fine. Um, obviously there's some minor differences, but they're pretty small. Next up I tried Duck Hunt using the Red Sapper in the Player 2 port on the front and it worked just fine. 
<laughs> After that, I used my Famicom Zapper, which looks like a pistol, and played the game Gumshoe, which is one of my childhood favorite games. Obviously, I'm pretty lousy at it, but I think it's really fun and it works fine. However, remember, don't have the Zappers connected, both uh, in the expansion port and on the Player 2 port, because then you'll never hit anything, even if you're pointing both of the same Zappers at the, at the same position, it won't hit anything. And next up I did kind of a fun thing and used the Konami laser scope just to see if it works and it works just fine. <laughs> then I tried a Famicom Disk System game via the F Drive N8. Druid works just fine. And of course I had to take out my power glove and try a few games, so I played some Gunsmoke, which was very hard to play. And I forgot you actually had a center button, which allowed you to center where you're pointing with the arm. So I was playing really lousy Gunsmoke. But I learned about the center button, or actually, but I remembered about the center button after having played some more of Gremlins 2 and I played some Kirby as well. <laughs> Works fine. And then I tried out the goggles by Sharp, the 3D system, which you have on your face like this, and it has like shutters, so you have 30 FPS on, uh, or 30 Hertz on each eye, and it works fine. And I played some uh, Falcon with that. Obviously, I'm pretty lousy. And after that, I tried the FDS RAM adapter with the FDS stick, and it worked just fine while I was playing the game Gyrus by Konami. And then sadly I have no footage of this, uh, but I was trying the Famicom Disk System version of Zelda 1, of course. That game has an enemy you have to defeat by shouting into the microphone. The enemy is called Paul's Voice and they're in, I think it's the fifth dungeon or something like that. So I luckily I had a save stored on my Hello. Famicom Disk System game and Hello. I used that. And I used my radio mic here and it can connect via stereo to the analog NT. However, I had to use an adapter in order for it to actually power on the microphone. Uh, one thing which is different between using the analog NT Mini and the normal Famicom is that the microphone audio is mixed together with the game audio on a normal Famicom. Whilst on, a, on the analog NT Mini, you won't be hearing your microphone at all. That's one thing to remember, so it's hard to know if your microphone is working or not. So my recommendation with this Analog Anti Mini Noir is to jailbreak the firmware and either get a, a Famicom Disk System RAM adapter plus the FDS stick in order to play all the Famicom Disk System games as there is no core for actually playing Famicom Disk System games on the Analog Anti Mini. Or you could get one of the EverDrive N8, either the new one, N8 Pro, or the old one works just fine. If you want to use Famicom peripherals, there's an extension cord, and this actually allows you to use the microphone at the same time as you're using the 3D system, because else the 3D system will obscure um, the block the port for the microphone. Oh, and lastly, of course, I tried some Kadash using the Mega Drive core. And it works just fine. However, as you know, Mega Drive has three buttons, so they're mapped with, I think it's A, B, and then select for C. And there's possibilities to use the M30 8-bit Bluetooth controller or the SN30 Bluetooth controller with the Analog NT Mini Noir, which gives you the six buttons the Mega Drive has. Yeah, so these are my findings with the Analog Anti Mini Noir. I'm super happy with it. However, I was not happy when I saw the tax customs I had to pay when it arrived here. Holy shit. Anyways, less Christmas presents for my uh, siblings, kids. 
but uh, <laughs> other than that I'm really really happy with the system uh, it plays great I'm I'll be streaming some old NES games in the upcoming months and uh, yeah I absolutely love the system have any of you guys got the system if so what are your findings please tell me in the comment section below also like and subscribe and bye